Hey, what's up, guys? Got another oscilloscope. I know! I'm shocked, too! Also can't find my knife, so... Bear with me. Hopefully this will be good enough to open her up. I'm sure you already saw this was from Handtech. Here's our little package of information. One probe. Hope there's another bag in there. IEC power cable. USB. Uh, BNC to alligator clips. Two of them. Interesting. Oh, yeah. I remember. Now, this is the uh, Handtech DSO 2D10. We already looked at the 2C10, which is pretty much this oscilloscope, but this one has the built-in arbitrary waveform generator, so hopefully it will be a little bit, you know, more fun for us to go through and take a look at. Oh, this is a DSO 2D15? That was a 2D10. Okay, 2D15. So this is a 150 megahertz oscilloscope, one giga sample per second with a 25 megahertz, 200 mega sample per second uh, built-in arbitrary waveform generator. What did I pay for this? About $300. I'll put a link down below. And yes, I paid for it myself. I am not sponsored by Handtech, although I'd sure like to be. Or Keysight. Or Roden Schwartz or LaCroix. You know. Those guys. I'm just teasing. Let's get a closer look. Alright, so here we have the front panel. We have our vertical buttons. Up here we have our quick access button, save, recall, measure, acquire, display, cursor utility, auto set, single. Run stop. We have our trigger control in this panel here, our wave gen control here, horizontal controls here, vertical controls here, external trigger generator out. This is a two channel. Nothing on that side. On the back, we have a USB out. And over there, we have our IEC cable. So we'll get her plugged in here. Pop out those feet so we get a nice. Uh, friendly viewing angle. I'm going to adjust the camera here a little bit. And let's power it up. Power. That's the Pittsburgh way of saying power. Power. Just like the former Steelers coach Bill Cower. Cower. When, they, when he was a coach, they used to say, you know, Cower power. Cower power. <laughs> All right. So here we are. Now, what we need to do is we need to leave this running for 20 minutes before we do the self-calibration. So, the timer has started, and in the meantime, let's peel it. Oh, 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 oh. yes, that's my tribute to you know who. Good day, mate! <laughs> 20 minutes later, nothing connected, we go utility, yes we want English, let's go back, apparently Paul the dumbass pushed the wrong button, so we're going to keep pressing until we get back to English, it's a lot of languages, alright there we go, sound, update, pass, fail, System page one, page two, Calibrate. Press F1 key to start, F2 key to stop. Calibration takes one minute. Oh, yeah? Let's find out. Just because you're here, you know, not like we're doing anything else. We might as well find out, right? Here we go.
I missed it by a little bit, but we'll see. All right, we are coming up on a minute. We are at 10 out of 12. 11 out of 12. And... Come on, come on. Yeah, apparently decided to do it again. Okay. I wonder if I actually have to push that F2 to make it stop. We'll find out. Yep, apparently you do. All right. Anyway, it did take about one minute, which is fine. It's just setting all its internal references and everything, and that's the reason you have to let it warm up. So now we will calibrate our probe. This is a 150 megahertz probe, 1 in 10. Okay. Where is... Where's the calibration for the probe? What the... Alright, so here's the probe manual. And it is for all of those models. The model we have is the 150B, which is listed on here. So if we look, it says compensation trimmer. Should be right there on the probe. Here's the probe. Oh, there it is. I was looking for it opposite. That's really strange. That is the strangest place I've ever seen one of those put, but whatever. All right, so let's uh, hook that guy on there. Hook up our ground. Then we'll get like a so. We don't need channel two on. All right. So that is good there. Now we need our little trimmer tool. And that goes in here. And we just want to flatten them out so that we have nice 90 degree edges on everything. Cool. All right, we're going to start out and take our first look at the scope with a 10 megahertz crystal oscillator. So let me hook that up. We're going to take the tip off here so we can use that. Make sure we are in times 10 mode. And we'll probe right there. Hit our auto set button. Yeah, there you go. Zoom in here a little bit. So you guys can see the screen better. You can see we're right at about 10 megahertz here, which was just what we wanted to see. Now, we have a 150 megahertz scope. I've also got a 100 megahertz crystal. So, let's hook that guy up. So, we'll pull out the 10 megahertz crystal. We'll put the 100 megahertz crystal in, in its place. Power the circuit back up. Get our probe in there. Hit the auto set. Uh, the auto set didn't do so good with it. Let's do a multi period. 
There we go. So realistically, to read a 100 megahertz signal, you'd want to have a 300 megahertz or higher scope. Same with the uh, probe. But it is, uh, it is reading it, and it should be should be about two and a half, three volts. We're getting what? Yeah, somewhere in that area. So yeah, it is reading it. And realistically, that is just about the only test that we're going to do with an outside thing. We're not going to look at a bunch of the scopes functions. It's the same as the uh, 2C10, basically, other than it's you know a little faster. What we're more interested in is the uh, signal generator aspect of it. So let's take a look at that. All right, so let's hook up a BNC cable. This particular cable, how well you can see that, is RG59, which is not ideal for this because this has a 75 ohm impedance. I think we'd rather have a 50 ohm impedance. So here's what we'll do. We will hook her up. We'll hit the generator. One kilohertz sine wave. Amplitude. Let's make our amplitude one volt. There we go. And impedance, 50 ohm. We also have high Z, we'll leave it at 50 ohm. And let's hit auto set. We're going to have to go through that again, I'm pretty sure. Well, auto set didn't like that at all, did it? Multi period. No. I wonder why auto set doesn't like a 1 kilohertz uh, sine wave. Uh, let's go back into the generator just to make sure. Yeah, 50 ohm. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oops, I turned it off. Yeah, turned it off. Because Paul's not that bright. Why am I getting 20 volts peak to peak? Because channel 1 is in times 10 mode. There we go. That's better. A little, a little fidgety. All right, what other waves we got? We got a square wave. I'm whoop, square wave. We have a come on, be nice. We have a ramp wave, an exponential wave, which is more what I would call like a, a capacitive charge discharge, and we have noise, and we have DC. So let's do a, do a sine wave at 25 megahertz, which is what I believe is the max frequency on this guy. Well, that's taking a while. Yep, there we go. 25 megahertz. Can't bring her in here. There we go, 25 megahertz, nice signal. Uh, menu on. What about 25 megahertz square wave? Did that reset its one megahertz frequency? One megahertz, is that the max I can go? How fast can we go with the square wave? 10 megahertz on the square wave. All right. Let's spread her out there a little bit. Yeah. It ain't pretty, but it's reading it right. Let's uh, bring us back up. Page 2. Put that on 50 ohm. Yeah, it makes no difference for that. Okay. Page one is our square wave, ramp wave. 
Yeah, there are arbitrary waveforms that you can create with it as well. All right, let's do a ramp. There's a ramp wave, one megahertz. Amplitude, one volt. Let's change our amplitude to two volts. Symmetry is 50%, impedance 50%. Okay, try an auto set on that guy. Looking good. Looking very good. So while I'm looking at this, I'm just kind of thinking here. Trigger mode. Yeah. We have all of our uh, things we can decode. UART, line, CAN bus, SPI, I squared C. Let's, uh, let's set something up for that. That might be kind of fun. All right. Let's see if we can't decode some I squared C data. I have set up for us an Arduino with an I squared C OLED that is simply counting to 500 over and over again. So we're going to need two probes, one for data and one for clock. Luckily, I say, I say, I say, luckily, boy, I just happen to keep, you know, a couple extra silicone probes around. You never know. So we do have two probes. Excellent, excellent. Now, let's go and read the instructions. Press the trigger menu. Press the type soft key, and we must select I squared C. Okay, next it says source selection. Play, press. Okay, so SCL and SDA. So clock. Is channel one data is channel two then I'm supposed to press a a when soft key when when soft key should be on start bit and connect the SCL so that was a uh, SCL is channel one so we'll connect up S SCL. All right, so there's a ground. We shall connect the ground like so. Then we need to connect SCL, our clock, which is right here. And that goes into channel one. Next thing, this is channel one. Connect signal to channel two. Okay. So there's, mm, pardon me, signal, or in this case, data. On channel 2, we'll turn on channel 2 because we will need both of them here and available. Next instruction, press the level soft key, then turn the trigger level knob to set the desired voltage threshold. Well, let's see if we can't tune this up a little bit better. Okay. Nice word C address level it's on the clock. Trigger level. Clock is channel one. So we get it when it drops. And yeah, put it right about there. Or, or there. Or there. <laughs> okay. We'll put it there. Right, data must be stable during the entire clock cycle. Hmm. Looking okay. Let's move our horizontal position over here like so. There we go. Okay. So next up start trigger when okay trigger condition when SDA data transitions from high to low while SCL is high that's a start condition okay let's take what we got now and just see what happens if we press decode type 
I squared C. In position. Please adjust the time base, okay? Decode, label position. Sync decode. Let's let's monitor it. Let's see what that does. Monitor doesn't seem to do much of anything. Sync decode. Still trying to see where that purple's going. I can't figure it out. Oh, there's the purple. Okay, label position. There we go. All right, so adjust the time base. Let's try an auto set, see what that does. I'm getting a lot of question marks. Let's see if I bring these more into focus and then Move this over here. Perhaps I need to adjust my trigger level. Oh, type is not edge. Type is I squared C. And I need to adjust my trigger level, right? One moment, please. I am not having much luck with the I squared C decode. Uh, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. But we will have to come back to it later. This is not something I play with all the time, so I'm not quite sure what I'm doing wrong. And I'm sure I'm going to get some comments like I always do. You shouldn't do the review if you don't know everything about it. Well, my reviews are not so much the expert review. My review is a knowledgeable guy showing you what you get when you open the box so that you know what your experience is going to be like. And, you know, if you're on my level or near it or around it, above it or below it, doesn't matter. You are going to experience basically what I am experiencing, which is just a little confusion if you don't know how to set this up properly. I just don't know what I'm doing wrong. I feel like this should be working. And yet it's not. So we'll skip this and come back to it at another time. Yeah, this is giving me a headache now. As you can see, I am getting data, but it's like writing over top of itself, and I can't quite see what they're saying, so I don't know. This is not something I, I do all the time, so it's not something I'm all that familiar with. I'm, you know, I'm just not going to stress about it too much, so it's there. It works. If it's something you need... Well, then it's there for you, and uh, that's a very cool thing. So, yeah, the decoding. Let's move on to uh, FFT. Okay, what we're looking at here is a 1 megahertz sine wave that is 2.1 volts peak to peak. And we're looking at this in what's called the time domain. So, here is our zero line. This is zero volts. And this is also zero seconds. As we come up, the voltage increases. As we go down, the voltage decreases because this is a sine wave. It's AC. It has both positive and negative voltages. Now, since I said we're reviewing this in the time domain, that means this is the point of zero seconds, 500 nanoseconds per block. So that's at 500 nanoseconds as we come across. We are looking at this signal in 
the domain of amplitude over time. But we can change that with the fast, for, fast Fourier, for, Fourier transform. What that does is that changes our time domain into the frequency domain. Show only, yes, please. Good. So now, trying to. Now, as you see, we're looking at that sine wave in the frequency domain. So right here is 312.5 kilohertz. And as we move across, you know, we change frequency to up here. We're, at, uh, we're down to 250.31. We're here. We're at minus. Why are we at minus now? But anyway. So that's the fast Fourier transform. There's not going to be much here off of this signal. Let me see if I can bring up a better signal and we can take a better look at it. All right, as you can see, I am probing the 16 megahertz uh, clock chip on that Arduino. And if we zoom in there, you can see right at 16 megahertz is the fundamental. And then you can see a couple of the harmonics coming off of it. So FFT basically gives your oscilloscope the ability to become a poor man's spectrum analyzer. You're still viewing the same information. You know, it's not giving you superpowers. All it's doing is changing the way the information is presented to you. Instead of being presented across time, it's being presented across frequency. So instead of this being time, these are all different frequencies starting from this point. Like if I turn it off, just hit an auto set here, you should be able to see. So that's what we're looking at across time. That's what we're looking at across, at across frequency. Same signal, same information, just a different way to look at it. Oh, my. Okay, now we're focused. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Now, I'm not going to tear this apart because the insides are exactly the same as the one without the signal generator that I reviewed. Okay, focus. There you go. That I reviewed, I don't know, a couple months ago. I'll put a link to it down below. So, why tear up something beautiful when you've already seen what's inside of it? All right, um, yeah, that's about all I got for you guys today. So feel free to uh, like, share, comment. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed. That really helps us out. And uh, if you'd like to join the Patreon, uh, there will be a link to that down below too. That's it. I'm out. Peace.